All right, so here's what I would consider more of a warm-up exercise for the section. Um, if we have a positive valued measurable function whose integral is zero, then the function must be zero almost everywhere. So given epsilon greater than zero, consider the set of all points such that f of x is greater than epsilon. Well, this is precisely the inverse image of the open interval from epsilon to infinity. And this must be measurable because it's the inverse image of a measurable set, because it's the inverse image of an open set. All right, so now note that the function epsilon times the indicator function of the set of x where f of x is greater than epsilon is less than or equal to f because at any point where f is less than or equal to epsilon then um, the left hand side is going to be zero and so it's and f of x is always greater than or equal to zero and so this is true and then if f of x is greater than epsilon then it certain then on the left hand side it evaluates to epsilon and f is greater than that. So obviously this holds. So note that if we take epsilon times the measure of the set where f is greater than epsilon, this is precisely by definition um, the integral of this function epsilon times the indicator function of f strictly greater than epsilon d mu because this we could pull this epsilon out front and then we're just taking the um, integral over um, the integral of the indicator function on the set where f is strictly greater than epsilon which we know is precisely the measure of that set all right but this thing because this function is less than or equal to f this integral and because these are positive functions this integral is less than or equal to the integral of f d mu but this is equal to zero. So what does that tell us? Well, epsilon is a positive number and this measure is a positive number. So we know that it must be the case that this product must be equal zero. Um, and since epsilon is strictly greater than zero, we have that the measure of this set must equal zero. And this holds for all epsilon greater than zero. And so the result, the desired result is going to follow very easily. So now we know that the measure of f greater than one equals zero because this is just epsilon equals one and set where f is greater than one is contained in set where f is greater than one half which is contained in set where f is greater than one third is contained in etc etc and this is because if we look at the set where f is strictly greater if, if f is greater than one over n then f is also going to be greater than one over n plus one since 1 over n plus 1 is smaller than 1 over n. And so that's why we have these nested sets like this. And so because we have this sequence of nested measurable sets, and we have a the first set has finite measure, we can use one of the theorems from before to conclude this. So if we look at the measure of the set where f is strictly greater than 0, this is the measure of the intersection from n equals 1 to infinity of the set where f is strictly greater than 1 over n. Or, yeah, we can do this, or, or, or this can be written as the limit as n goes to infinity. No, this, this is really the best way to write this. So this, and we know by our theorem from previously because of, um, Let's see, this is something we proved before. This limit, this, this, the measure of this intersection is the limit of these measures. 
But everything here, every mu, every measure of f strictly greater than one of n, that's always zero. So it's just a limit as n goes to infinity of zero. So the measure of the set where f is strictly greater than zero equals zero, and that means precisely that f equals zero almost everywhere. And that's exactly what we were trying to prove in this exercise, and so we're done.